Logitech's G900 Chaos Spectrum wireless gaming mouse provides professional-grade performance, their most accurate sensor, and innovative design features. See the URL in the description to learn more. Hey everybody, Ryan Shroud from PC Perspective here. We need to have a talk. It's time to talk about the newest, fastest consumer desktop processor from Intel, the Core i7 6950X. This is their new enthusiast platform. This is Broadwell E. It's been coming for quite a long time, uh, and it is impressive in many ways, but a disappointment in one key way, and that is actually in terms of price. You can see we've actually got uh, the 6950X here in, uh, installed in our brand new ASUS uh, X99 Deluxe 2. A lot of motherboard vendors, including ASUS, are sending out revamped X99 motherboards uh, to support the platform. This one has a lot of USB 3.1 on it and stuff like that. A lot of interesting changes. And of course, LEDs on uh, the PCI retention brackets. More on that at a different time. Um, but we want to go through uh, basically what my quick experiences were with this processor. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't spent as much time with it as I wanted to quite yet, I'm trying to leave for an extended trip overseas for work. But um, we, we have enough to talk about here, right? So uh, the, the 6950X is one of four enthusiast class processors that Intel is releasing with uh, underneath the Broadwell E kind of moniker, right? The s flagship is 6950X, base clock of three gigahertz, 10 cores, hyper-threading enabled for 20 threads, 25 megs of cache, 40 lanes of PCI Express 3.0, and quad channel DDR4 2400 memory support. Uh, you have the 6900K coming down after that, that is 3.2 gigahertz base clock up to 3.7. That's an eight core 16 thread, 20 megs of cache, 40 lanes of PCI Express memory is the same as well. Then we go down another step to 6850K, it's 3.6 gigahertz, so the highest base clock of the new Broadwell E parts, up to 3.8 gigahertz on uh, turbo. Uh, six cores, 12 threads, 40 lanes of PCI Express quad channel memory. And then the final one is the Core i7-6800K. That is actually 3.4 base, 3.6 boost frequencies, 6 core, 12 thread, uh, only 28 lanes of PCI Express, and again, quad channel memory. So that's your lineup uh, across the board. The only one that Intel sent us so far is the 6950X, and it is a, as the thread count and processor core count would lead you to believe, a damn fast processor. Uh, and single-threaded performance is actually 15% faster than the Core i7-5960X, the Haswell E flagship part. Uh, but compared to the Core i7-6700K, the uh, kind of consumer-level $350 Skylake part that's out on the market, uh, it is actually 16% slower in single-threaded performance. And again, that's kind of expected. Usually when you have a quad-core part going up, it's ten, uh, going up against a 10-core part, you're going to see drops in frequencies uh, to some degree, and that's obviously what, what's happening here. If you're looking at multi-threaded applications, whether that be video encoding or rendering, obviously this is this processor is going to scream through it, right? It's 33% faster than the Core i7-5960X, the Haswell E flagship, and it's 87% faster than the Core i7-6700K Skylake processor. So uh, if you're a power user, if you're doing a lot of photo editing, video editing, uh, rendering, encoding, anything that you know is going to be heavily, heavily multi-threaded, 10 cores, 20 threads is clearly going to be uh, a workhorse for you for an extended period of time, right? Now, one of the interesting new features that they've actually added to this platform is called uh, Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0. All of those words, tur Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0. And it's a kind of a poorly phrased marketing term for the ability now for you to install a driver on your system that supports Windows 7, 8.1, or Windows 10. And now that driver will read some information from the processor and it knows which cores on your specific processor are the fastest, that will clock the highest, um, that are the most stable under higher clocks. And that's something that is determined at the factory level, right? So in my, in my case, core number four was the fastest processor for my 6950X CPU. Uh, and what this driver does is it basically um, replaces some of the Windows affinity uh, a metrics, I guess, or kind of control, and it will say if you have a single threaded workload that is using 90% of a single thread for more than a second, it's going to actually move that workload onto your fastest core, and it's going to keep it there, and not let Windows kind of just move it around as you might have often seen in the past. This gets, this basically means that you can have, you know, 
15% or so improvement in single threaded application performance. And that's, again, we compared the 5960X to the 6950X here, and that our measurement was 15%. We can test it with the capability on or off, and again, we got about 12 to 15% performance advantage on a single threaded run of Pavre, a rendering application, right? So the technology works, it's very interesting. Um, but that kind of the long-term implications of it are, I think, more interesting we'll have to discuss later. I think we'll see that feature basically move out of an Intel driver and into the Windows kernel uh, in the not-too-distant future, to be honest. Um, you know, other than that, the processor technology, this is 14 nanometers, right? So it's the first time 14 nanometer processor has been uh, brought to the, has been uh, moved into the enthusiast class, the slash E series of processors. Um, it's still running on the X99 chipset. Uh, so if you have x 9 platform, chances are you can just get a firmware update and it will support it, or there will be plenty of new motherboards uh, from the likes of Asus and others out there ready for you uh, if you want to buy into this platform. You still have 40 lanes of PCI Express 3.0, so no changes there on the higher end parts, and then one SKU uh, with 28 lanes. So in terms of PCI Express configuration, all of that remains the same as well. Uh, their unlocked processors and, you know, uh, overclocking capability turned out to be pretty good. I was able to get this CPU to run at 4.3 gigahertz on all cores full time uh, at 1.35 volts, which is a little bit high, but we're using a uh, Corsair H100i GTX uh, 240 millimeter radiators cooling, and we saw temps in like the 72 degrees Celsius range. So reasonable, high, but reasonable uh, for that type of voltage. So obviously, 10 cores at 4.3 gigahertz is going to be extremely fast proposition, right? So if you're into overclocking and you need uh, this many cores, then that's going to be the way to go. So it's a super fast part. It's the fastest consumer desktop processor you can buy. It's going to have tons of capability and room for you to expand with 40 lanes of PCI Express. But what's the drawback? Intel's going to be asking over $1,700 for this processor. The Core i7-6950X has a 1K kind of tray pricing from Intel at 1723. That's a lot of money, guys. Um, the next step down, the 6900K has a tray price of 1089. Uh, the 6850K is $617, and the 6800K is 434. So uh, you can already see kind of where the, the $430 and the $600 processor are going to be the ones that maybe get the most attention from this launch. Um, all these parts are 140 watt TDPs. You know, there's, there's not a whole bunch of uh, technical differences between them uh, in, except for those clock speeds and core counts. And I, and I have to say I was disappointed in Intel kind of keeping or, or raising that price on their flagship kind of extreme edition part, right? When Intel went from a 6-core to an 8-core, in the enthusiast platform, the eight core processor was still $1,050 or so. And even then at $1,000, we said, this is a really, really expensive part. You should only buy it if you really, really need it. And we almost always kind of recommended the next step down. In this case, rather than have the extreme edition part, their new flagship 10 core part be that $1,000, that $1,100 processor, and say the 6900K with eight, co uh, eight cores and 16 threads being at that $600 mark, they basically just created a new step above uh, the 8-core 16-thread part. So that's, that's a little bit disappointing. You're getting very close into, like, uh, I'm going to buy Xeon processor hardware. It's hard to imagine even um, a significant portion of the power users that Intel is really going after, those people editing 4K video or, or the people who are, like, gaming and streaming and recording and transcoding all at the same time. Those are the types of people that are enthusiasts that would actually be going for $1,000 parts, and we seem to have... Uh, Expanded upon that greatly with a $700 increase in, uh, in price tag. That being said, if you want the best of the best, this is clearly the fastest processor you can buy. Uh, and there's really nothing you can't do when you have 10 cores uh, in your machine in terms of computing or rendering or, or whatever else uh, you want to do. So be sure to check out the full review. We've got all of our benchmarks, power consumption, all of that stuff is included in the full review. Uh, and we will be spending a lot more time with this processor and a, a barrage of new motherboards as well. Uh, and so look forward to that uh, coming here in June and July. Thanks, everyone. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.